Overpowered Hour. On this week's show, we talk about the all-new Grenadier Quartermaster, and then we're joined by Greg Fitzgerald to talk about he and Ashley Giordano's project to republish a classic Barbara Toy adventure book. And now, here's the show. Welcome to the Underpowered Hour. I'm Steve Barris, mild-mannered television executive by day and Land Rover collector by night. You can find out more about our cars and what we're working on at thebarriscollection.com or follow us on Instagram at thebarriscollection. I'm joined, as always, by my good friend, Ike Goss. Thank you to everyone joining us today. I'm the lock tab to Stevens lock tight. I'm the frequently forgotten fastener of podcasting. Ike Goss. I own and operate Pangolin 4x4 in Springfield, Oregon, where we live and breathe Land Rovers. Check us out online on Facebook, Instagram at Pangolin 4x4. Let's get started. All right, Ike. Well, in the news this week, uh, you're one of your favorite people, and I know your own personal guru, uh, yoga guru, uh, Baba Ramdev, has bought a Land Rover 130. A- and I apologize to anyone who is a big uh, Baba Ramdev fan like you are. I have no idea who that is. And so that it was so widely published. I read that article no less than like seven times. Like, it's a big deal. I guess he's a big uh, yoga guy. Well, he's actually kind of a little he, yoga he's guy. He's probably a little popular little. in a part of the world that you don't visit very often. I'm sure. I, I, mean, I guarantee you that's true. But uh, anyways, he has 130. Uh, it's a... Uh, a steering wheel on the right-hand drive uh, side, so that's, uh, does that's he, exciting. Does he teach yoga classes in the vehicle? He actually steers with his feet and uh, mm-hmm. gases and brakes with his hands, mm-hmm. uh, but still maintains perfect con- eye contact with the road. It's really incredible. I mean, the wow. flexibility. It's just it's out of this world. It takes, mean, really. uh, takes years of practice. Incredible. Yeah, exactly. But uh, And, uh, you know, otherwise, uh, yeah, you know, he looks good. Now, do you think that he turns the heat up inside of the Land Rover like super, super, super hot? Like, uh, like a hot time, so. yoga thing? Like, I don't like know. Does he have thing? his own type of yoga? Is, uh, he, oh, is that know. a thing? I don't know. Like These are all things we could have a... we could have very easily researched any of this, but uh, I just looked up his name pretty much. That was all. And, and that he does What did it turn up? Uh, his name and that he does yoga and that he bought oh. a 130. Wow. There was a whole page. It was just 130. <laughs> Three sentences on a whole page. Wow. Yeah, it was just he bought a 130 and there's mm-hmm. like you can, if you Google Baba Ramdev right now, you will get. He is this really news? No, no, it's no, really no, news. No. I just like saying a it. A person bought a car. A person bought a car. Yeah. Yeah. Next I think we week, we have higher journalistic standards <laughs> that we need to uh, strive towards. This is what's happened. The AI has taken over. And the these are the, this is the article it's writing. This, this is, is the article it's writing. Yo, famous yogi. <laughs> you know, I wish it was Yogi Bear. If I was going to oh, be a famous yogi that drives true. a Land Rover, that's I would true. pick Yogi yeah, Bear. Yeah, I would too. In fact, yeah. that would be news if Yogi Bear got a, got a 130. That's yeah. real news. You could fit a lot of picnic baskets in a 130. Oh, picnic baskets? Yeah, it yeah. would be, uh, hey, would be great. What's up with you? Get them a 130. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's got, uh, you know, third row seats. You can get all, everybody in there. It's fantastic. All right. In, speaking, in other news. Speaking of third row seats, something that doesn't have any third row seats, uh, or if it did, they would be uh, outdoor third row seats, is the brand new, just announced at, uh, at Goodwood, Grenadier Quartermaster. Which is, of course, the crew cab pickup truck version. It's more like a three quarter master. It's, it's if like I'm being master. honest, yeah, you're not wrong. I feel like I, that I, was a missed opportunity. Quarter master. That's a good, yeah, <laughs> you're right. It was. It was. This is a missed yeah. opportunity. This is a missed opportunity. Am I wrong? No, I'm you're right. Wrong. It should be called the three quarter master. Yeah. So it is uh, sort of the what is the the Glendevogen that they cut the back off of and put seats back there and like made it like a hot tub that you can put in the back or whatever. It's sort of like one of, oh, it's the squared. It's the, it's the it like G36 squared or whatever. It sort of looks like that where they've uh, cut out the back of a, uh, you know, of a Grenadier and there's a little area back there, a little tiny truck bed. It's uh, sort of like, what's the, What's the uh, the Honda? Is it the Honda? Is the Honda Avalanche not the Avalanche? Ridgeline. The, uh, the Ridgeline. It's a Honda Ridgeline um, Grenadier. Is it? So I don't know. It's is kind it? of like the. It's kind of like a Defender One Hundred and Thirty. It's like a crew cab pickup truck, but it's a One Hundred and Ten though. Is it? Is it? I don't know. Like, I is think it, it's is longer. It, is it a little bit longer? Oh, I want to say it's a little bit longer. Again, I think you need to do your homework. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I just. I just saw truck thing and and looked cool. You know, it looks pretty neat. I have to say, 
that will never come to the United States, I imagine, because that would be considered a pickup truck, I think. And uh, they would slap a huge tariff on it. So maybe they'll put like a little capper on it and be like, yeah, it's fine. (laughs) That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little, put a little, put a little truck bed over a little, little bed topper over there that you take off. That'd actually be really cool. I feel like it has a longer wheelbase and it has a specific size bed to fit a standard Euro pallet in the back. Oh, interesting. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, there you go. They, why not? Has a 62 inch bed. So it is uh, a little bit, a little bit longer than the, uh, the standard version. Right. And a little bit shorter than like a regular, like US pickup truck. Yeah. So it's sort of like a Honda Ridgeline. It's longer than a Honda Ridgeline, I think. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Um, now, in, in yeah, uh, military good. history, a quartermaster is the person in charge of like supplies, supplies and, and stuff, like that yeah. sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was more of that than in, than, than a quarter of the truck is missing, which is how I first sort of read it. Like it's, there's a quarter that's missing. Three quarter master is, so three quarter I think, master. better. It should have been three quarter master. That's a huge missed opportunity. Yeah. There is a marketing opportunity there. It was, that's too bad. Hey, it's we're available. Late. It's not too late. If Mr. Radcliffe's yep. listening. Available. Three quarter master. Three quarter master. Be. Yeah. And this He's, has a BMW uh, drive, same BMW drived yep. engine, st- yep. Magna tire, suspension design. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Still, et cetera, uh, et cetera. Yeah. Sharper image, world band clock controls, and uh, all that, all that business. Sounds really cool, but uh, also sounds, and it has a much larger payload capacity than like mm-hmm. a Gladiator, if I'm not mistaken. So, right. Yeah. You know, the idea is that you can actually use it as a truck more. You than, can use it as a truck. Yeah. Yeah, more than yeah, the Gladiator, Gladiator is uh, famously awful. Like it's the worst of everything. It's the worst Jeep. It's so? the worst pickup truck. It's the worst for towing. Yeah, I think it's just generally it's a it's just the worst. I think the I, I kind of like the Gladiator. You know, uh, there's not too many trucks that you're going to remove the top on. So I that's think true. for that it deserves some credit. That's right. Yeah, that's you fair. Know? Since you we know don't get I... a lot of that kind of thing here in the U.S., if you've got a four door truck or even a two door truck that right. the top comes off of, it's removable. That's pretty cool. It's what about that cool. one? There was that one truck. I don't know what it was, but you could like fold the bed like back down into the passenger compartment so that you would have like essentially an open air rear. In It was so that you could fit longer things into the bed, but you could also just drive around with like the rear of the truck open. That sounds what familiar, it? but I don't remember which one I that it was is. a Chevy. It was a Chevy of some kind. Was it an Avalanche? But, uh, it might have been an Avalanche. It kind of looks like a lot like a Ridgeline. Maybe yeah, it was a Honda sense. Honda Ridgeline. You know, you just keep coming back around. Quick story on a Honda Ridgeline. So I was... No. Uh, no one know, wants to hear no, this. No. Oh, yeah. Nobody wants to hear it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 all right. All right. Let's go Go ahead. Let's. I let's was talk. on a trail uh, run with uh, mm-hmm. some people and a gentleman showed up with a Honda Ridgeline and, mm-hmm. uh, and proceeded to say that it was the ultimate off-road vehicle. Really, there wasn't anything sort of more capable than the Honda Ridgeline, which, sure. I, you know, I... I I, he wasn't ironic, but um, then he proceeded to do the trail run and mm-hmm. uh, about two minutes outside of the camp, uh, blew a tire mm-hmm. and uh, didn't have any tools to change the tire. Oh, so needed surprise. everyone's help to change the tire. Why would you in the ultimate vehicle? You wouldn't need any tools. You would not need that. No. So oh. he changed over to the donut um, and then refused. Wow, it doesn't have a full size spare. Doesn't have I guess you don't need a full size spare if you have the ultimate spare, vehicle. No. You, and then refused, refused to go back to the camp um, mm. because he paid his money, which I believe it was free. But anyways, he, he was going to do this, this trail run to which mm. everyone said, you, you can't, you can't do it on a donut. Please don't like, please don't proceed. And he's like, no, I'm doing it. You can't stop me. And so he proceeded to, to do it on the donut. And because of the tiny, tiny size of the donut smashed his bumper and wheel arch and things into a whole number of things. It was a, it was an unmitigated disaster. And so to this day, uh, Liza, Chris, the who doesn't listen to the show, myself, a number of other people, uh, refer to the Honda Ridge line as uh, the undisputed uh, king of off-road uh, vehicles. Uh, I thought that was a Freelander. Like, that's the undisputed king of Land Rovers. Uh, this is the, so this is the undisputed. Step below that's right, the Honda Ridge line. Ridge line. Yeah, yeah mm. you can't. I mean, you can't. It simply is the greatest off-road vehicle ever created. You know? I mean, they are pretty reliable, those Hondas. I do, is it, though? I think it's kind of not a great one. <laughs> I, think it, like, you know, I think they break down quite frequently. One of my favorite automotive marketing stories is about the, um, the Discovery that mm-hmm. was uh, rebranded as a Honda, I want to say Passport yeah, or Crossroads right. or I think something it was, yeah, like that in Asia. Right? Yeah, 
That's right. Yeah. So, and they did a, they did a, uh, like a marketing survey and they asked people which was more reliable, the Honda Crossroads or Passport, whichever it was right. called, right. or the Land Rover Discovery. And people almost unanimously 100%. said that the Honda was Makes much sense. more reliable despite the fact that they were, in fact, the same car. The same car, yeah. No, it, you know what? I would probably answer the same, even knowing that they are. I mean, <laughs> just, just, no. just by lack of having the Land Rover <laughs> logo on it, it I think oh, is a no. little bit more reliable. Yeah, oh, no, no, they're, they're very good. But anyways, the uh, the uh, the Honda Ridgeline, is, uh, it really is. It's the, it's the greatest. So why don't you have so, such a vehicle? They're just, I mean, they're so sought after. They're just, they're almost as hard to find as. I do like the elements. You know, they have the flat floor. Yeah. And, oh yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, they're four wheel yeah. drive. My buddy has a. four Strangely, drive. we ran into a guy in Death Valley with a flat tire and a Honda Element with no tools. Oh, no tools. Yeah, yeah. must be a thing. No, yeah, they just they're like we don't need them. You just don't yeah. even need it. Don't even just leave it at home. You know, you don't need any of that shit. What are you, no. you going to do? What's going to? You got the donut. You're fine. You take the wheel nuts off with your hands, I guess. And donut sounds donut good right about now. Yeah, that's a thing. I had a late lunch. Um, so speaking of uh, late lunch and donuts, you yep. were up in the beautiful, uh, great white north. Uh, did a little I Canadian imagine, tour. Yeah, doing a little Canadian tour, doing some land procurement, doing some uh, expoing. Uh, what was uh, what was happening up there? We were invited by Ray Highland, who's a member of the Explorers Club or something like that. Yep. He's done some really cool trips. We should definitely have him on the show. Uh, the adventure of like the, the Highland of the Highland Jack. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, not at all. Uh, so Ray is a, a interesting fellow in the Land Rover community. He mm-hmm. and his family did a trip before Last Overland from right. London to Singapore in an eighty-six inch Series One. Great right. trip, great story. Doesn't get enough credit, I think, in the Land Rover mm-hmm. community for mm-hmm. undertaking mm-hmm. that trip at a difficult time, and uh, I think they didn't have as much support they did it you know solo right. they didn't have support vehicles and defenders following them the whole way and drive from hotel to hotel yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. i think they really did a, a a more honest more uh interesting trip but uh, the details of which have kind of gotten lost or overshadowed by the last overland anyway mm-hmm. uh ray organizes several overland shows including bc overland and i i believe another one northwest in the northwest mm-hmm. in plain washington so uh, check out the BC Overland website. Uh, if you missed it this year, but next year they're having it again. Uh, great event. Lots of uh, interesting vendors and classes and, you know, various things you can learn and uh, sort of uh, find out more about overlanding and equipment and vehicles and uh, lots of interesting cars there. Uh, good Land Rover turnout, uh, but Jeeps and Toyotas and Sprinter vans and Mercedes trucks and, yep. you know, the whole, you know, contingent, whatever, wherever you fit in that spectrum of overland vehicles, there's something for you. So uh, definitely check that out. Ray uh, was kind enough to have us up there and uh, invited us all to go. So uh, the, the gang piled in and, and drove up there. Uh, Jenna went to the Royal Canadian Archive and yeah. got some uh, really neat information on uh, forestry service Land Rovers. Mm-hmm. which uh, we happened to run into one of the cars in that group of information. We had all of the, like, what they paid for it and where they bought it, what dealership, cool. what the key codes were, like, for these vehicles that are from the early 50s. So that was kind of neat. We got that information. We looked at a lot of Land Rovers. We looked at a mm-hmm. lot of cars, looked at mm-hmm. a lot of parts, looked at, met some cool Land Rover owners. We went up to see Alan Simpson, who mm-hmm. has a shop up there, and he's got a, some neat vehicles for sale. He did uh, the restoration on Grizzly Torque, the mm-hmm. round the world uh, Canadian expedition vehicle in the 50s. That's a neat car. It's got all the paintings on it that Robert Bateman reapplied to the vehicle. So every kind of country they went to, they did a different painting, a different panel mm-hmm. on the side. That vehicle is uh, owned by Stuart Longyear, who was also at BC Overland. And so we got to see that. That's coming up for auction, I believe, at Sotheby's. Ooh, cool. In the fall, I want to say. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. curious to see how that does. But a uh, long, expensive restoration on that car and a uh, really neat one. Really a uh, icon of uh, early exploration. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, we kind of, you know, did some driving. We went over to Castlegar, mm-hmm. a fellow there who's a, a, a electrical engineer that does some work for us. And uh, he has an organic farm. 
They make a lot of neat stuff. We uh, loaded the truck up with pickles and all kinds of preserves. And I saw that. You know, I saw the photo. Oh, yeah, man, just, we just yeah. piled on all that, all, all the good stuff that they make over there at the uh, the Kootenay Corner Farm, which mm-hmm. is uh, which is great, super awesome. Uh, Jacob and his wife Delia have a, a really nice little spot there on the river, and uh, they're Land Rover enthusiasts, uh, you know, unparalleled Land Rover enthusiasts. And so we checked out Jacob's car, did some, did a little tinkering on that, and then we went and uh, we saw uh, another fellow who was a longtime Land Rover owner who's kind of divesting himself, getting older. Uh, he uh, had some Land Rover stuff. Interestingly, interesting coincidence on this trip. I had uh, put a Land Rover on our trailer. We were mm-hmm. driving along. I uh, saw another Land Rover in a different town on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. So we we pull in to look at this Land Rover for sale, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a sign in the window and it, it you know has a phone number. And so I call the guy and he's like, are you outside? And I'm like, yeah. So he comes outside and he starts talking and he's very excited about Land Rovers and Turns out he has another one in his garage and he has, you know, shelves with parts. And so we're talking to this guy and then another guy shows up and it's like his friend and everybody's talking about Land Rovers and Mm -hmm. whatever. And then this other guy, a different fellow, shows up and he's just standing there quietly. And I'm assuming Mm -hmm. that he knows this gentleman that we're visiting and uh, he's quiet for like 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden he interjects and he says, is that Land Rover on the trailer yours? he points at me and I said, yeah, it's mine. And he's like, I used to own that car for 40 years. It was stolen from a friend. (laughs) (laughs) No, fortunately, it was not selling. He sold it. But um, uh, it was interesting coincidence because like we were just stopping in a completely different town. And so we were stopped and he just happened to be driving by. So it was really an odd coincidence. And the truck that I had purchased was missing its tailgate. And so I asked him, I said, uh, what do you happen to have the tailgate? And he was like, yeah, I took it off 20 years ago or something like that. <laughs> and so uh, it was neat. And we we were able to reunite the original wow. tailgate with this Land Rover, which was an incredible coincidence. And I was pretty happy about. So he's like, yeah, uh, I've got the tailgate. It's 70 grand. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. Uh, he didn't hold me over a barrel too badly, but uh, yeah, yeah. it was. But it was 70 uh, grand Canadian. So that's. Phenomenal. Yeah. That's, that's like 650 yeah. US. Right. That's no big deal. Yeah. yeah. No big deal. Yeah. Okay. So um, that was good. And that's we, awesome. We, we crossed the border and the, you know, amazingly, the border. uh Customs and Border Protections officer were efficient and helpful and kind, which is wow. uh, yeah. not my usual experience there. So, <laughs> uh, I, you didn't have Linus with you this time, though, did you? That's that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. Usually, yeah. when Linus comes, there's some sort of cavity inspection. That yeah, happens. exactly. That's I think because he opts in uh, always. It's, yeah, he uh, checks the box. Yeah, he checks when, the box. Yeah, I don't know. They, why, ha- they say, "Do you have anything to declare?" He's like, "Yes, cavity yes. search. <laughs> yeah. You have to find it." Yeah. yeah, you have to find it though. <laughs> uh, at any rate, uh, it was a great trip. Lots of lots of neat stuff. Uh, lots of beautiful Canadian countryside. Yep. Uh, it's pretty amazing. You know the the Columbia River there. Mm-hmm. It, it goes uh, right through uh, Canada and then into yep. Washington and down nice. into yep. Oregon. And mm-hmm. it's really uh, in Canada. It's pretty amazing because they've they've irrigated the valleys there, and there's tons of like fruit orchards yep. and all this wine. agriculture and it's Lots it's of just wine. it's just absolutely lovely there's like uh, produce stands every quarter mm-hmm. mile or something like that then you cross over to washington and it's just <laughs> desolate dust bowl it's horrible it's horrible it's yeah. kind of embarrassing but yeah. uh anyway canadians mm-hmm. they uh they got their irrigation down at least right. in that area yeah they figured it out yeah well there's a little bit more snowfall up north of uh of them and then by the time it gets to washington the water's no good anymore well so also good probably waters. california probably bought up all the water rights to all of that <laughs> just diverted ago. it so, yeah, exactly. yeah so yeah, the, the, the washingtonians down. they can't even they can't use any of the water that flows through if they state. look at the colorado river for too long they get in trouble so that's yeah. true that's true yeah, that uh los angeles water district does not mess around yeah that's true it reminds me, I should go turn off that shower I've been running this whole episode. But anyway, it's better. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> No worries. Uh, yeah. So, well, there, there you go. Speaking of uh, Washingtonians uh, and showering, I don't know. We got to we gotta come up with a better segue than that. But, anyways, speaking of, we have our very good friend, Greg Fitzgerald, a man of uh, many talents. But this particular talent happens to be getting vintage travel books uh, republished along yeah. with his partner. 
uh, in crime on that project, Ashley. And uh, we're going to be we're going to be joined here uh, very shortly. So uh, let's uh, let's rev up the uh, interview machine here and uh, let's shovel some coal in that say. thing and let's get started. Let's get this completely steam powered. So here we go. All right. Well, we are joined by none other than the Greg Fitzgerald, the other the other cousin Greg. Um, how you doing, Greg? It's good to see you, man. Good to see y'all. Been about a month, but good to see y'all again. Yeah, I feel like it was just yesterday. We were all anarching together, and now we're all back home. And We're Greek and then, peaked yeah. out, I guess. We're all Greek peaked out, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen Dixon in, in days. It's, uh, it's unsettling. <laughs> um, how was your, uh, first of all, how was your trip to Greek Peak? Did you enjoy it? Did you have a good time? And uh, what was your general impression of the event? I mean, I think it was a fabulous event. You know, we, we really just haven't celebrated these vehicles on this scale in so long in this country. Um, other places do it. I mean, you know, as Ike knows, Kuma can certainly do it down in Australia. But it's always large celebrations in the UK. And it was, it was so fun to really just have this big celebration of the Land Rover in the United States and North America. Yeah, absolutely. It was, no, it was, it, was, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. What was your favorite uh, part of the event? The best thing you saw there? You guys? Yeah. <laughs> We get that a lot. Texas Pete's Moonshine Pickles. Texas Pete's Moonshine. Actually, there's um, like the margarita one that mm-hmm. he does. That's the dangerous yep. one. That's the one you got to watch out for. Interesting. That's the one that makes you wake up in a flower bed. I feel like Texas Pete always wakes up in a flower bed somewhere. That's why, <laughs> why we love that guy. That's yeah. why we love that guy. But that is not the reason for your visit today, uh, Greg. Although uh, reminiscing about different pickled things with uh, different pickled Pete. Uh, is always fun. You are here today because of uh, uh, some, somewhat of a, an epic undertaking, something that was a, a little while in the making. You decided that in your uh, publishing uh, portfolio, you would add uh, getting a Barbara Toy book republished. So let's talk about that a little bit. Maybe, Greg, for those I realize that might not know who Barbara Toy is, and certainly I think if you listen to this show, you might, but... Um, <laughs> Why not give us a, a real quick little intro into, for those who don't know, who is Barbara Toy? The so Barbara Toy was an Australian-British explorer, adventurer, I guess today we call her an overlander, who basically did some of the world's very first large-scale exploring in a Land Rover. Uh, this yeah. series won Pollyanna. was a demonstrator from Land Rover that she ended up with in 1950. She was at a pub in London. She bet a bunch of friends that she was going to drive to Baghdad in a couple of weeks. Um, I think she said like two weeks, like, I'm going to Baghdad next week. Of course you can drive there. I think it took a little longer because she actually had to or some things, but she did get there pretty quick. And with the exception of some early explorations to set up dealership networks, Mm -hmm. um, some in Africa, some here in North America, it it really was kind of the first person to large scale drive a Land Rover in vain, I guess you could say. And she did a lot of explorations to the Middle East, the Arabian Peninsula, Mm -hmm. North Africa. She loved the desert, loved the Sahara. She did a round the world trip. So actually, Pollyanna has been to the United States, right? And famously, Bill Cooper uh, reproduced part of that uh, run. I think it was last year. Last year. Yep. And by doing so, or in the process of doing so, she she wrote a book for each of these journeys. Her first was called right. A Fool on Wheels, which was her London Baghdad trip. Yep. And then there were various books about journeys afterwards. All of these books are now out of print. Uh, by now, we're talking about a week ago because one is back now. Wow, one is right. That's right. We're burying the lead here, but one is uh, one is obviously back in print. Yeah, right. And uh, these books have become extremely expensive. If yeah. you want a copy of, especially some of the earlier ones that had smaller print runs, or you can get full copies of them full on wheels are several hundred dollars. I mean, you do not see them cheaper than that. The right. later books, a couple of them you can get under a hundred, but just the just a tiny bit under a hundred dollars. And to accumulate an entire collection of her stories would take you quite a while of just searching right. and four figures. Right, right. right. Um, so this isn't something you can just uh, pop into a Barnes and Noble and uh, no. If you could find a Barnes and Noble and uh, <laughs> yeah. and buy these are uh, these are little only used and and rare at that. Very rare. First of all, what's the book? So the book it's actually it came out uh, about a week ago. It's In mm-hmm. Search of Sheba, which was her, I believe, it was her second to last book. And it was okay. her journey to Ethiopia. The, the basic goal, Barbara always kind of had a broad goal to her trips. Mm-hmm. It didn't really drive the plot of the trip, but it was always the, we're going to go do this. And in right. this case, she was looking to find remnants of the uh, biblical queen of Sheba in Ethiopia. So she drove from Britain to Ethiopia in 
At this point, it was a series two. I think this was the one she did in her 88. Um, Mm -hmm. This is the one where she had to trade in Pollyanna, her beloved series one, because it did not suit the vibes that Landrover was trying to put out with the new and improved series two. Exactly. It's the L322 of series Land Rovers. Exactly. Yeah, right. Um, So they kind of, uh, Pollyanna had originally been a factory vehicle. And um, I guess I don't exactly know why, but she had to basically trade it in to continue getting maybe some kind of support. Um, So they gave her a series two and there's a, there's an opening scene about her just basically driving out of the factory gates at Solly Hall crying because Hmm. this was just, this wasn't Pollyanna. This wasn't the truck that she'd taken literally around the world. Right. And she hated the series two and she thought it was not an improvement on the series one in any way. And, but she did still drive to Ethiopia. And, um, so she sold, she sold out. She sold, she sold, sold her got a soul. series two. Yeah. And that's not a, downgraded. Man, too bad. It's downgraded. It's too bad. Yeah. Downgraded. Yeah. Maybe side. I, I can relate to that. I, I have, I have similar feelings about series twos. Yeah. Not that, not that I don't like them, but I like series ones more. Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't? I mean, everybody, everybody does. So yeah. the, in Search of Sheba, this uh, Barbara Toy book, this this was, like you said, this was the, almost, it was the last book she did. Yeah, It was the second to last book. She stopped writing books, second to last book? Yeah, she had one more, The Way of the Chariots. I believe okay. that one came after this. That was reprinted in 2009 okay. as Crossing the Levant or something. I forgot the name of it. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. It's, okay. it's listed as a posthumous book on a lot of lists, but it's actually, apparently, The Way of the Chariots reprinted Which with a new was, title. Okay, right. Because when did Barbara Toy pass away? 2001. And she's a pretty incredible person. So she um wow. she regretted very much giving up Pollyanna for... I think she had two series, too. She did this trip yeah. in an 88, and then the trip after, which was Way of the Chariots trip, she did in a 109 doormobile. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, but she always regretted giving up her series. One, always wanted it back. It kind of ended up with like a training school because it got returned to Land Rover and they sent yeah. us a local... And it kind of... It ended up with a collector who refused to sell it back to her, which is oh. kind of a douchey move. That is a douche move, yeah. yeah um, it happens. And then she ended up buying it from his estate after he died. I, I believe see. this was maybe the late 80s, early 90s at this point. Did she Did she kill him? I, I mean, I kind of wouldn't pay a past her because she's kind of a badass. <laughs> she's a cool lady. The, the <laughs> picture of her in the diving, you know, hard helmet diving suit is pretty cool. Yeah, she that's left it with me. a friend, and a guy from Colorado stole it from her. It's, it's really, oh. it's, it's a sad story. That's a different story. You're you know, mixing oh, that up. oh, so that's right. That's something else. Now, that's something else. Now she, yeah, she got a doormobile after this, the '88, right? The, yes, uh, Lander one on nine. Set her up with a doormobile. I feel like I've seen pictures of her in front of the Martin Walters headquarters, yeah. picking up the doorba. It's that's kind of an cool. interesting one because I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's a two door doormobile yeah. or three door doormobile, yeah. right? Instead of a five door, most of them. Are Does it five still doors. have the second row of seats in a in a three door? Depends. I have never seen pictures of hers inside, but you that's can cool. kind of get them set up in different ways. You know, different ways. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. neat. That's actually kind of a almost a better way to do it if you don't have passengers because you just got way more room back there. That's you cool. know, I never, I never, I never agreed with that because I no. feel like having access to the front part of the rear load space is really right. nice, and there's the really doors. no downside yeah. to having right. doors there. So why right. not have doors? Yeah, I guess it's a good um, point. Yep. Well, that's places for water to get in. It's a serious Land Rover. Your bar has got to be really low to even be driving the thing. <laughs> the inside weather is the outside weather. <laughs> it's inside 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 inside. Well, that's cool. That's cool that she did in a doorbell build. But uh, yeah. so Pollyanna is is now with our good friend uh, with our good friend Tom Pickford. Did she get an opportunity to own the car before uh, before yes. she passed away? She yeah, left she it to the Pickfords. Okay, yeah, because Tom did the restoration on her behalf, or his dad rather did the. Because dad, on her yeah. Behalf? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I believe That's it was cool. her dad. And and I now I what I don't know is what happened to the roof. Because like when she was doing oh, right. her journeys, it had a wooden top. That's like right. I, yeah, it was like a very boxy. Yeah. I think it had like, like a wooden a custom door. made hardtop. It's really cool. It was it's, made gone, of it's not on the car anymore. It's gone. It was wood, I it was made of wood. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it may have just succumbed to the English. Yeah, weather. That's too bad. Oh, Definitely that's cool. easier to replace it with a canvas top than to you know, remake the, uh, that wooden top. Looking at those pictures, I guess I hadn't realized that it was a wooden top and not, I just assumed it was made of some type of metal. That's really cool. There you it's go. a pretty neat one. Yeah, I've seen it uh, recently. Well, not that recently. A few years ago, uh, I went out to Tom's place to uh, to check it out with him. And uh, it's very cool. And it's really neat to see uh, such an incredible piece of history. Great, obviously exceptional restoration they uh, tom's dad and tom do a pretty incredible job of that stuff so it's uh, really neat it was in uh, in grand shape and i think it may have been 
out recently at one of the one of the seventy fifth uh, events. I think Mike Bishop. Said. I, th- I think I think it was it was it that big one they had like a week a month ago that big uh, series yeah. of thing Packington at the Packington, Packington. Ford. Yeah, I think Packington, it yeah. I think it was I think it was not to be confused with Packington Ford, which is the Ford dealership just down the way here in Baton Rouge. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it was at the uh, I think it was at that event. Really he cool actually drove see, it honestly. around the world again, apparently. At some point, mm-hmm. which she didn't write a book about that I know of. Um, I think there's some fun. Yeah, there's some articles, I think, in some 90s rover mags, but I haven't really like found that yet. She did a transalpine kind of a Hannibal in the Alps kind of thing at one point. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah. she was driving, I mean, she died in 01 and she was doing stuff in the vehicle into the late 90s. Um, there's, a, there's a story about, I guess, for the 50th, there was a, a raffle or something and they were giving away one of those like 50th anniversary defenders that was like it was a british truck but it used all the leftover nas parts right right yeah it was like that dark metallic blue i think most of them were and i think it was for one of those and she's like i'd take it but i'd have to have tom in the in pollyanna right behind just in case it broke down or something like that (laughs) that's awesome everything i've heard from anyone who knew her in person said she was just a fabulous person you know Really chill, yeah, because, really rolled with it. Because you were saying that Mike Bishop was actually friends with her towards the end of her. I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently. Um, so Mike Bishop actually was um, an early senior helping me figure this out. Right. Interesting. This was this was a passion project that I worked on with um, Ashley Giordano, who is the senior mm-hmm. editor at um, Expedition Portal Overland Journal. He yep. wanted to be here tonight, but unless things have changed... Let me check my yes, Ash- Ashley is in Namibia right now yes. doing her own sort of barber toy uh, thing in real life. And uh, I guess her internet, they turned off all the internet in Namibia at 11 o'clock at night, I guess. I, I don't guess know. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. I uh, We apologize for ha- having to be so late for her that... Yeah. That, that didn't make it. She didn't make it through. Or there's a coup. One of the two. There really could be a popular. coup. You never know. It's very popular these days. Very popular. It is cool. Days, it's in so, vogue. It's chic. You know. It's very chic. Yeah, it's in very in vogue over there. Over oh, there. We're starting to get it here, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. A little bit of that coming over here, too. It is. Uh, yeah, hopefully she's uh, she's grand and uh, and uh, yeah. we'll have to have her on on a, on a future show to talk about her adventures and the book yeah. and, uh, and all that sort of business. But let's talk a little bit about. Uh, OK, so I, I want to get in search of Sheba. Um I can't just roll into the Barnes and Noble here in the United States. Is that correct? There's, there's correct. I have to get it from the UK or uh, or an international bookseller. Correct. So it is republished in the United Kingdom. A really long story made short. Um, basically, Michael helped me a couple of years. Mike Bishop helped me a couple of years yeah. ago yeah. with really tracing down her descendants and some wills mm-hmm. and stuff that gave mm-hmm. us just something to work with. Um, right. About a year and a half ago, Ashley started an Instagram where she really started exploring Barbara's story. Mm-hmm. And uh, she and I connected through that, and we both we both had the goal of getting the book republished. Right. So we're like, okay, well, two's better than one. I have this pile of information, and you have this pile of information. Right. Like a giant pile of information. It's like trying uh, to get a freelander registered. It's, it's exactly. The same, same process. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then Less it blows up in your though. face a couple times, just yeah. like a freelander. Right. <laughs> just like the freelander. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we got it all sorted out. Mostly thanks to um, Lois Price, who's a motorcyclist who has ridden across. Mm. Um, she's got three fabulous books. Some mm-hmm. of the only books I've ever read in one sitting. Yeah, Lois is a neat lady. I uh, I met her one time here in uh, yeah. here in Oregon. They just come to a couple Overland things here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, she um, actually connected us to some people. The original publisher, John Murray Press in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Now a division of the Hachette Book Group. Mm-hmm. And, as all um, things are, and as all things are, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's right, yeah. And um, it's been reprinted as part of a vintage travel tri- uh, journeys reprint series they're doing. Oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. Well, it's a really long story short, but is that it, a is that you think more in fashion these days? These uh, these classic uh, travel anthologies, which of course were like. In the 1960s and 70s, uh, and of course before that, all the way back to the 50s, obviously, but certainly in the 60s and 70s, they were incredibly popular to have yes. these, uh, you know, these sort of uh, travel, what we would sort of call, I guess, today travel vlog. I mean, you know, there are a certain number of rare books in the Land Rover world, you know, 100 Days of Darien, the yeah. Darien Gap book is like one of them. The early Barbara Nick, toy books are one of Nick them. Nick Dimbleby's first book, very hard to find. Nick Dimbleby, was that the Range Rover conversions book? One. No, uh, no, not that. That's a great one, though. No, he did like, it's it's actually the complete, his complete body of work, if you will. It's the precursor to the uh, Camel Trophy book. And uh, oh, I happen to, I, I have one that Nick gave to me. And it's one of my uh, most prized uh, possessions. 
Yeah, and then there's Precision that there's that Camel Trophy book, The Great Adventure, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have one of those. I have one yep. of those. Those are very hard to get. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Uh, there is, uh, it's funny, it is kind of difficult to get some of this Camel Trophy or, or Land Rover stuff, I guess, in general, right? Yeah. The, uh, the writings of the Land Rover community, uh, save maybe First Overland, uh, they're a little they're a little tricky to get. They're a little tricky to yeah, get. Yeah, a lot of them have gone out of print. Uh, what is it? The Year with Four Summers. Year with and, Three uh, Summers, yep. Three three men's meat and uh, mm-hmm. you know three men's uh, meat. Yeah, that's yes. uh, that's Jeremy Ainsworth drive oh, around the world in a right. uh, series two two liter diesel. Huh? That's an obscure one. If you're uh, looking for that, uh, what's the other one? Uh, the Ovaltine Expedition of 1955. Yeah. It was like the ladies that did the Himalayan expedition in 1955. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. talked about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we did. And yeah. uh, there's also a uh, ten in a Land Rover. Uh, it's like per diem to pod pod one or i can't exactly remember i'm totally butchering the name of that book but it's it's pretty neat and then there's um a mary make em or uh nine in a land rover from brazil to canada yeah that's another uh it's another that's a good one interesting yeah. one that uh there's like nine people in an 80 inch driving ten thousand miles <laughs> yeah. very comfortable with each other <laughs> yeah it sounds great that sounds uh, fantastic Bruce, right but exactly uh, they were writing books you know um, I mean, it was a very, it was a very British art form, especially at the time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, the, the list that, you know, we were all just rattling off a couple of minutes ago of all these titles of 1950s Land Rover Adventures, um, yeah. they were all very much part of, of this moment. So, right. yeah, and, and they, they do, they are, John Murray has a, um, a series called John Murray Journeys. Okay. And they're looking to kind of dig things out of the past. Um, this book is coming out alongside a book of travel poetry from the 1960s by Don Morales. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's called, um, I think, Going Away or something. Um, obviously, I Go wasn't away. involved in. Yeah, right. I wasn't involved in that project. It's poetry obviously. about getting people to leave your uh, your office. When you <laughs> right. Don't go anywhere. That's what I'm into. Yeah. <laughs> I might I might write that book. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah, so this has been reprinted by John Murray um, mm-hmm. as part of this series. At this point... Um, they are only committed to reprinting this book, but we are working on, you know, Hell or High Water getting the rest of the, the yeah. collection printed in other, some other, way. Other Barbara Toy books, yeah. Were all yeah. of her works published through John Murray? They were all published through John Murray, I believe, okay. yes. Okay, um, great. Oh, they wow. may have funded some of the trips at some point because they were somewhat successful. Okay. Several were right. like Book of the Month Club selections and stuff. Okay, cool. So um, I would say then probably a good way to get to uh, publishing more books is to have a lot of people buy this book. Exactly. So. I mean, that's, you know, that's what we're looking to do. Um, so you have right. to purchase it right now in the United Kingdom. That may change okay. at some point. But John Murray is um it's not distributed through his Shep Book Group USA. So okay. there's really no US rights to this book right now. However, if you okay. go on Hachette's website in the UK and search the book, yep. they have a bunch of links to a bunch of UK bookstores. Booksellers. Several mm-hmm. of them actually ship free over here. Oh, great. Um, it's maybe, only about 30 uh, Maybe you could uh, send us some links so we could uh, put them in the show yeah. notes. Yeah, I'll get you some yeah, we'll put, show notes. Yeah. We'll, put links, uh, yeah, we'll put links to that in the show notes so you can yeah. uh, easily uh, get to them. Because, yeah, it's it's totally worth it. Even then, uh, having a book shipped over here is is usually not only, that much. Uh, you know, 10 bucks or something. It's not it's not yeah. too bad. So no. and, and certainly it's, uh, it's for a good cause. And it's a lot yeah. cheaper than finding an original printed one on eBay. Exactly. So. And it's, um, you know, it's... um. Something you can actually read on the beach because you're not worried about breaking a collectible book and filling it with sand. <laughs> about destroying a, a, piece, right. a piece of cultural uh, heritage. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's good. So, um, but yeah, so um, definitely go ahead and buy it. Barbara Toy was really an incredible woman. I have only, even through the degree of the journey I've had researching her, only scratched yeah. the surface. I mean, I haven't read all the books on account of I can't afford them. <laughs> sure, right. Yeah. They're hard to get. Yeah. Uh, you can't even find some of them consistently. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But everything you hear and when you hear people who knew her, you know, it, it just you, you put together her story more and more. She just seems like someone I, I would have loved to have met, um, really would have loved Absolutely. to have tendered on the road. She rolled with it. She didn't, you know, she was a woman doing this, which was incredible, especially in the 1950s in the regions she was going. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty incredible that really the first person to battle test the Land Rover was a woman traveling solo. Mm-hmm. But she didn't really like, you know, utilize that. She was just doing her thing, you know? Yeah. And I really, it's a, an immense amount of respect you have the more you learn about her and how she rolled with the punches. Um, yeah. She very rarely talks about being, you know, distressed on the road. Kind of a combination of that British stiff upper lip and that laid back Australian attitude. And she had both. That's the perfect mix. The perfect yeah. mix. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty neat. Uh, pretty neat lady. Did a lot of cool trips and... um Visited a lot of really uh, interesting places. 
Uh, I've read some of her books and uh, they're, they're definitely worth a look. So, uh, you know, if it's been on your list, this is a good opportunity to check that out. Yeah. So, Greg, what's up uh, on the uh, list for you? What's uh, besides uh, the Atlantic British uh, publication? What else have you got bubbling on the stove there? Um, right now, I've been kind of working on um, some long term kind of digital nomad travel in my LR3. Mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. just got back the other day from spending about a month in the Great Lakes region. Spent nice. about three and a half weeks in the back of that thing. Which lake were you in? I think it's not all five at some point. Um, I spent nice. a lot of time around Lake Michigan on this trip. Mm -hmm. Took the steam ferry SS Badger from uh, no, Wisconsin nice. to Michigan. Controversial, controversial steam ferry. Uh, not anymore. They fixed the entry tension system, so it's like camps down. Ah, they fixed that, huh? I didn't they, realize that. Yeah, they fixed that it. It was a big deal years. for a while. It was like, you know, it was a big polluter. They were just dumping ash in the lake, right? Yeah. yeah. Which, oh, to be fair, for, a for, for like decades. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, yeah, sure. Um, they now have a, a retention system that um takes all the stuff out of the, out of the boilers and all and puts it in tanks and then it all gets offloaded in Michigan. So... He's good for a while. <laughs> and they just dump it in downtown Detroit. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's yeah. is it still run on coal? He's still coal fired. She's the last coal fired steamship in the country. Not going to be forever. Um, the company just got bought by a major Great Lakes shipping company, um, Interlake Steamship <laughs> Company. They're probably going to convert her to diesel for the long term benefits. There's only like a half dozen steamers left on the Great Lakes. So, right, right. There's not really a lot of people to crew them. Oh, yeah, um, that makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. So, well, you know, you could always reach out to Ben and Dixon. I can't imagine it's that much different than an old airplane. Right, know, I was going to say, just, you know, it's not different from a radial engine, right? They're up for the challenge, I think, They're you know? I, I feel like those two could be steamboat captains, you know? Look at the, you know, yeah. get them some overalls. We'll send Linus out. He'll figure it out. Right? He's got Linus has the facial hair, so, you know. He does. He <laughs> looks like he's the captain of a steamboat. Right, he like, does. Right now, right now. He may be. Steamboat Linus. <laughs> I love it. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the uh, we'll get, get get ready for the Steamboat Linus merchandise. So we're gonna have a line <laughs> Steamboat Linus things until uh till Disney sends us a cease and desist. But uh, okay. right up until then, it's gonna be it's gonna, it's be, gonna be fabulous. Fantastic. Well, Greg, at uh, the Anarch uh, this year, there was uh an, an uproar, it's fair to say, uh over our uh neglect over one of uh listeners' absolute uh favorite segments. And that is the legendary, illegal in <laughs> most lower states, Ike Goss lightning round questions. So uh, you are uh, unfortunately the uh, the first person to be uh, to be run through the uh, the gauntlet uh, in quite a while. So uh, I'm sure all the edges are uh, rustier and sharper than we left them. So uh, I don't know who's more unfortunate, me or everyone has to hear whatever is the first thing on my mind. It's going to be great. I don't know. I'm gonna, <laughs> I can't. I can't wait. I can't wait. Ike, are you ready uh, with the uh, brand new and also original recipe, extra tasty, crispy lightning round questions? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we've got a good battery of questions to determine uh, Greg Fitzgerald's worthiness in the Landover community. Uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what kind of answers we get from Greg. But, uh, you know, could get dicey. Uh, mm -hmm. You ready to go, Greg? That's all. Are you familiar with the format? Close enough. Of just, you know, just like whatever comes to mind, right? Right. Uh, you know, just your gut reaction to mm. the question. So, so kind of quick uh, questions and quick answers. Are you all Filtered set? for the public. Filtered for the public. We'll see. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. First question. Gas or diesel? I'm kind of a gas guy, but I guess it depends on the region you're traveling oh, in. Nope. Yeah, nope, nope too that's much. it. It's, it's mm -hmm. all you get. It's gas. Mm -hmm. Gas is your, your response there. Hard mm -hmm. top or soft top? Hard top. Hard top. Mm, it was getting boring. Um, <laughs> bronze green. Or Tangier's orange. Bronze green. That's a fabulous color. Bronze green. All right. Sorry, Leaf Steve. springs or coil springs? <laughs> Airbags. Airbags. Thank you for warning. Going down I... hill fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the best way to remove 90 weight from your underpants? Don't wear underpants. Don't oh, wear underpants. Commander. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Put the well, uh, category, the command. I think category. Uh, I think we get partial credit on a couple of those. So yep. uh, let's see. Let me tally this up. Five out of five. Five there out of five. Oh, Nicely oh, well done, done, Greg. Well done, Greg. Yeah, well yeah. done. Well done. I didn't. Uh, I didn't know you had it in you, but I'm proud of you, uh, buddy. <laughs> came That's, came uh, through. Well came yeah, through in the end. Through. All right, sir. Well, hey, thank you uh, so much for joining us. Uh, I uh, it's too bad that Ashley couldn't, uh, and we'll definitely uh, have her on in a, in yeah. a future uh, show. Uh, all the best of luck with the uh, book, and thank you for both of you for all your work on bringing that back to uh, the Land Rover loving public. And we'll have information on where to get those things in the show notes, and hopefully everybody 
uh, heads out and gets themselves a copy of In Church of Ashiba uh, on sale in bookstores uh, now for the first time in quite a while. So Yes, and uh, go enjoy it. It's a great book. It's a great read. And Barbara Toy was an incredible woman. And you can get a little bit of insight on that. Fantastic. Thanks, Greg. Right. Thanks, You're Greg. Cool. Good to see y'all. All right. Well, I, it's too bad that Ashley couldn't join us. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a shame when three dudes are talking about uh, the greatest woman explorer. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, that doesn't feel entirely right. And uh, if I had known, I wouldn't have agreed to it. But here we are. <laughs> Not showing up. Yeah. Uh, we were at one point, uh, Liza was going to jump in and do this as well, but she got busy today and we got busy and it was uh, not, not, uh, didn't come together the way we wanted. But we are going to have Ashley on our show uh, at some point in the future. We want to talk about the Overland Journal work. We want to talk about obviously this project with her. So we'll, we'll do that. But uh, it was always, uh, it's always fun to talk to uh, Greg. We had a good time with him at Anarch uh, just uh, those many moons ago now. It seems like just yesterday, but it's uh, quickly becoming a thing of the past. So uh, yeah, it was great to see him. Great to, uh, Great to chat and what a cool project. I'm I'm looking forward to ordering my Barbara Toy book and uh, maybe I'll just have, I'll send it to uh, Bob and uh, Dan Ives and they can just throw it on my Defender. And then next time I see that Defender, I'll have a Do you Barbara have that read. stored at their house? Currently, it's in a top secret location that may be uh, Bob Ives Farm, yes. Uh, the uh, the Iveses have been uh, nice enough to store it for us while we uh, get it back to uh, where it's uh, stored long term. So right on. Happen. Oh, those right guys on. are great. Those guys are great. They are wonderful. We uh, we will at some point do a proper uh, recap of the UK trip. I'm also in the midst of creating a, a multi-part YouTube series. It's our first sort of uh, video uh, vlog sort of a thing project. So uh, look out for that coming up uh, relatively soon. Hopefully, I'm working away at it. So uh, we're. We're uh, going to have that to you soon. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, if you haven't already checked out the old uh, Patreon, we really would appreciate it. Uh, it has uh, all kinds of great stuff, some specialty uh, things on there, as well as uh, early access uh, to um, some special stuff, some interviews and some, uh, you know, individual uh, cameras, uh, Ike uh, Love Island style cameras around his home. <laughs> Uh, you can just check in on him sleeping or just doing whatever, you know, just, uh, you know, sitting on the couch, yeah, whatever, watching a movie, you know, whatever. It's uh, yeah, it's an exclusive uh, members only, uh, if you will, only only fans, if you will. Um, anyways, uh, so there's that and uh, the YouTube. Uh, you, why not get warmed up for what will be, I'm sure, uh, one of the greatest YouTube series uh, about me in the UK ever made. Uh, by checking out our other YouTube videos. We have great uh, tech tip videos. We've got uh, Bob Ives when he came to visit us in Oregon. We've got, obviously, the video of the show every uh, every week as well. So you can go back and you can see what your favorite Land Rover celebrities look like. And uh, yeah, it's great. We're going to have uh, all kinds of good stuff up there here in the next uh, few weeks. So uh, until then, unfortunately, uh, because of uh, all of the uh, high-quality, high-test Greg Fitzgerald content uh, this week, we have run out of time for Ike's review of Nando's. But we do appreciate you sending us pictures of Piri Piri sauce from the grocery store or pictures of you standing outside of Nando's restaurants around the country. Uh, enough of that business, and uh, we think we might be able to get Nando's to uh, finally return our sponsorship phone calls. So we appreciate that. And with that, Ike, I will chat with you next week. See you, Stephen. Thank you so much. The Underpowered Hour is produced by Liza Barris, Ike Goss, and me, Steve Barris. Pavel Svartov composed and performed our theme music. Consider supporting the show on Patreon. And if you already do, thank you. Your support makes the show possible. For even more, check out our Instagram or Facebook.